Welcome into EPAC All Access Musselman Appleman Edition. Musselman making it to the second round of the postseason last year, but we'll have to do that again or do better without Baden Hartman and Ray Adamas, some of the many graduates from last year's team after an ex- after an exciting season last year, guys. Uh, going to be tough to repeat that but we know they have some talent coming back as well yeah they really do and you know we talked about the game last year that really uh, cemented them into the second round was against wheeling park they'd played previously during the season and it was a lopsided game in favor of wheeling park then musselman comes back and gets the win when it all counts in the playoffs on their home turf and making it to the second round that 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 a team that the year previous underperformed at what coach thomas kind of thought the team would have been but they were in that kind of retooling mode a couple of years ago then you had baden hartman at a senior year ray adamas at a senior year and you know now kind of the reins are turned over once again eli fleming the transfer quarterback from maryland he's going to come in and be the quarterback kind of thought last year maybe it was going to be a young guy but you get a it's a guy that's now a senior he'll come in and uh you know from all the times we've talked to coach thomas off the field or we talked to him at the martinsburg seven on sevens you know eli fleming is is a guy that he's a real smart guy he's a, i believe he said he's got an over 4.0 gpa so if you have that off the field most of the time it's going to translate into on the field yeah the hype around eli fleming at least from coach brian thomas has been huge i mean it sounds like this guy is somebody that maybe we don't know because we haven't really seen mobility if he's able to kind of replace baden hartman in that quarterback side but it sounds like maybe his arm is something that is definitely going to be his strength and somebody that can air it out for this muscleman team which is something that muscleman fans aren't really used to you've typically seen them be a hard-nosed run the ball team first and go straight up the middle and try to beat you that way. We kind of saw it last year with Baden Hartman and Ray Adamas really change over to more throwing the ball, even though Hartman could run at times or they could go with a jet sweep, have Adamas in the backfield, try to mix things up and catch the defense off guard. But you got to adapt with who you have this year, and it'll be interesting to see how with Fleming in that quarterback spot and other guys in this roster having to step up and replace some guys that are now gone and a guy that's healthy now, Troy Wollaston, how good will he be this year? Yeah, you know, you mentioned Troy Wollaston. He's a guy that had a knee injury towards the end of last year, hindered him playing basketball. He was able to come back in the last part of the year. I do believe he made the all EPAC team uh, after just, I believe, a month of play. What he was able to do in the time coming back is huge. And I think that that being able to come back then, play a little bit, and then I believe he ran track as well if I'm not mistaken, and, you know, he's a guy that is going to come in this year, and he was more of a tight end guy last year. I could see him being a hybrid receiver type where he's going to get the ball down the middle of the field. Yeah, I mean, you have Wollston, you have Sheldon, you have Braden Miller as well, so. And who, uh, you know, young guys could be coming up in that crop as well. Yeah, Colton Sheldon also plays football. uh, So, I mean, there's a lot of guys on this team that have talent. We just really haven't seen can they be as dynamic as a guy like Adamas was this season we'll figure that out and, and this is a muscleman team that every year plays a tough schedule spencer and when we look at that schedule again it, it doesn't get any easier this year yeah it doesn't they'll host john handley out of virginia uh friday the 25th of, of august to open the season up uh john handley's a team that uh is kind of rebuilding of sorts i believe in my research i've seen that they have now uh they had hired the former head coach of Sharando's football team to be their head coach and you know Sharando's a team that's always you know come up and played these talented epac teams and have talent themselves in virginia i believe during the covid 2021 spring season uh, they made it pretty far uh, during the playoffs but then you got a loudon valley team out of virginia who's always quality up in loudon county uh, morgantown on the road that's going to be a tough game uh, then you go look down spring mills it's kind of the gamut that they're going to run from you know really the beginning of the season in, in september 8th to you know, all the way to Jefferson. It'll be Morgantown, September 8th, then Spring Mills, uh, who's obviously, we haven't been there yet, but we know that they're a team that's building and they're, they've are they been young and now they're getting older. Then you have Martinsburg after a bye week. And then you go to Cabell Midland. 
then you come home and then but you you're, you don't come home you come back to the panhandle obviously but you go to hedgesville and then you're at jefferson so that's three straight away games i guess four if you count washington as an away game uh on the 27th so it'll be tough and then they end the season with parkersburg you know parkersburg always a great program they were four and six last year are they going to be improved from that or is it just going to be an easy game on the schedule at the end of the season for the appleman yeah, I don't know. I mean, Parkersburg is always a pretty silent program, like you said. So, you know, I would expect it to be a very tough schedule. Uh, we know how talented the EPAC teams are. We believe that, you know, four of those teams could probably be in the playoffs again this year. And Musselman's looking to do that again. It won't be easy, but the expectation is now for this team, as it has been under Coach Thomas, to be a playoff team, get in that six, seven, eight win mark, and be one of the better teams in the state. And, Colin, we know that they really pride themselves on challenging themselves in the regular season with the schedule. Yeah, they do. And going through that schedule, it proves it just listing off all those teams. And as you just said, we had four teams that made the playoffs out of the EPAC last year. But historically, it's typically been three. And we know at least around the state, Cole Fields and Cole has this team going four and six this year, which means they'd be out. Yeah. Do we see an EPAC team then replace them? I don't know. But historically, it's been three teams, not four. We got to see four last year. It was a great accomplishment and something that we hope to see again, if not even more, because if it's those same four teams last year, maybe add in Spring Mills for a five, Washington for a six. I know that's a long shot for anybody at all to have all of their teams represented in a 16-team playoff. But if it's only three like it's historically been, who are those three teams that are going to miss? Obviously, none of them want to, but it happens. That's how history has shown could it be these guys, even though historically it hasn't been, even though two years ago they missed? Or do we see them continue to build off success like they were able to do last year, even though Baden Hartman and Ray Adamas are gone? Yeah, I mean, I think that's just time will tell for that. I think that the going through the gauntlet of that schedule, if they're able to come out and go to the playoffs, I think that schedule helps them in the playoffs. Well, it did last year. I mean, they lost in the regular season. Uh, Lead to, by 27. Yeah, to uh, Park South, or Wheeling Park, and then they come back and they beat them the next time around in the postseason. So, you know, if you're playing all the top teams in the state or, or the majority of the top teams in the state, that prepares you for the playoffs if you do get in because you've already seen that team. I mean, it goes on both ends, but it definitely helps more than if you just played a bunch of double A schools that you're not going to see in the postseason and then uh, you win all those games, you win a few games against your AAA teams in your conference and you sneak in as the 16th seed, that's not really going to prepare you very much. But if you play a schedule like Musselman does, it does prepare you. Well, we're going to take a quick break. On the other side of that break, we'll be joined by head coach Brian Thomas. This is EPAC All Access, Musselman Appleman Edition on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. The W.B. Hospitals East Foundation is excited to announce the inaugural Dr. Frank Sabato Jr. Pickleball Classic to be held on Saturday, September 23rd at the W. Randy Smith Recreation Center in Inwood. Join us for a fun round-robin style pickleball tournament with start times at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. Awards ceremony and lunch will follow. To register as a player or sponsor, call 304-264-1223 or go to wbmedicine.org backslash berkeley backslash giving to download the registration form. At Carter Myers Automotive, what we do today will tomorrow become what we've done. That's why Owners Just Do More no longer defines us. Our work is never done because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. One of the questions lawyers get asked the most is, what is my case worth? I'm Steven Skinner and this is my brother Andrew with Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers. The truth is, it's very difficult for a lawyer to pinpoint a number because every case is different. We get to know each situation and we'll give you an idea of what your case is worth and why. The sooner we get involved, the better we can do getting you the compensation you deserve. Google Skinner Lawyers or go to SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. Nothing goes better with football than chicken. From Pee Wee to the Big Boys to the Wing T Formation, a hearty meal of 12 pieces for $12 is just what the boys need to be at their best. Oh my, fumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Omaha! Yeah. Omaha! Yeah. 
Rocks 12 pieces of chicken, just $12. We welcome you back to Eat Back All Access. Now joined by the head coach of the Musselman Appleman, Brian Thomas. Coach, your team able to make the playoffs last year, get a first-round win. Uh, what were some things that you're trying to work on in the offseason? Uh, you know, just kind of, you know, I try not to compare teams with other teams because every team's different. Um, you know, and I don't want to tell these kids, you know, hey, compare you to last year because, you know, I, I don't want to compare them to last year. But at the same time, I think you can learn lessons from previous years. So, you know, in our offseason, we talked a lot about why were we successful last year? Why, you know, why did we win so many close games? You know, what, what put us in the position to do that? So, you know, trying to take lessons you've learned from the past and, and just kind of apply those to say, hey, we want to continue to do these things well that led us to success. And, you know, looking at this team compared to the last team, uh, you know, you have the departure of Baden Hartman and then you have Eli Fleming coming in to take, you know, take over that starting quarterback role. How much, or uh, I'm trying to phrase this question correctly, how big was it for him to come in in January and get into your flex days and work out with the team and do all those things rather than coming in, having, a, you know, your quarterback come in at the start of camp or in the summer? Yeah, I think it was huge, um, you know, and even kind of, you know, good question, uh, but even kind of expanding on what you said, you talked about getting him in flex days. Biggest thing was just getting him in the school and getting him, you know, his, his first day of school, um, you know, when me and him, we got to sit down and talk and we kind of, you know, I, I remember took like torn him through the school and saying, you know, here's here's going to be your classes. You know, that first day of school really, I really went out of my way to kind of make him feel welcome, but more so importantly is to introduce him to, to guys and, and and, you know, our kids here at Musselman are really good that, uh, you know, they, they, you know, this whole community is like this, our whole school, not just our football players, but, that, you know, be, be accepting and to help others and to make others feel welcome that, you know, our kids were able to do that. So, you know, like you said, from a football standpoint, it was really good, but even more more important than that, it was really from a relationship standpoint that he got to get to know those guys really early on. Ideally, it would be that your quarterback just – comes back every year and you never have to change quarterbacks yeah. but to have a kid coming in and taking over that has varsity experience how much does that help yeah you know like you said that's good you know being a senior is good you know when you get a kid that uh you know it, there's a big difference and a lot of coaches would tell you there's a big difference when you got a 17 18 year old kid compared to a 16 year old kid uh, you know, 15, 16 year old kid. You know, there's the, the the way that uh, kids develop. A lot of these kids really grow up at some point in high school. So you know, you get that senior, just the maturity level that he comes in with. Um, you know, and that kind of commands a little bit of respect. That you know, naturally he's a leader because he's a quarterback. He's a senior, uh, but just you know that that like I said, that maturity uh, coming in really helps us, and I think helps guide this team a little bit. And, you know, numbers-wise out here, we saw the guys from the freshman team, I believe, that are down there. It seems like this year uh, you've a lot of, got a lot of guys coming out. Yeah, um, I don't know an exact number. Uh, it's, it's fluctuated here and there. Uh, you know, we've had it. We've whenever school gets ready to start you get some new kids to enroll and so you get a couple kids up and you know we've had a couple kids a um, couple injuries that we've had a couple kids quit and whatnot I don't know the exact number but it's around a hundred um, you know our JV to freshman program uh, is exactly 60 players and our freshman team at the start of camp they were 35 so you know we had 95 kids out which we're about mid 90s right now uh, just 9 through 12. Troy brought up that Braden Miller's been a big leader for for you guys. What have you seen from him this year? Um, you know, kind of what I mentioned earlier, kind of maturity. You know, and and, and you know, last year uh, the big thing w w with Braden was he was a sophomore. So when you're a sophomore, not a lot, not a tons expected out of you, especially when you have a receiver that you know in Ray last year commanded so many double teams. Um, shoot, we had a couple games where he got triple teamed. Uh, where you know a lot of times uh, Braden was kind of. Um, just benefiting from hey you got all this coverage on Ray and and Logan too you know Logan demanded a lot of coverage that there were games he was kind of running wide open downfield and he was just kind of you know he was the dude that was in there he was the young guy 
just show up and give you everything. And when, when you get older, you know, you have to have to grow up a little bit. And that's the biggest thing I've seen from him is he went from, hey, I'm just that extra guy out there to, to I'm the I'm – the, I don't want to say role player, but he's kind of the, the, the third option to now, hey, you're one, of, you're, you know, you're one of our top two options. You know, might be our top one on some plays where, you know, I, I've really seen the maturity level in him and the leadership in him step up um, from a sophomore year to a junior year. And, you know, Nick just mentioned Troy Wollston a little bit there. Uh, what does his, him coming back from this injury mean to your team? I mean, you know, talking to him, he's going to play a bigger role on offense, kind of moving to a hybrid receiver tight end type. And then obviously what he does on de- the defensive side of the ball, what does having him back for a senior year mean? Yeah, you know, the biggest thing with Troy is um, him being vocal and his leadership with being vocal. And, you know, that's something that, you know, you, you can probably tell that in the stands just with the energy. You know, he makes a play. He's jumping up and, and running back and celebrating with his teammates. So you can see that energy a little bit. Uh, but, you know, just his voice in the locker room, that's that's something people don't see. Um, that's probably the biggest thing that Troy brings to the table is just his, his excitement, his energy. Um, but then, you know, on the field, um, you know, there's no question about, just the 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 passion and the plays that he makes man he makes so many plays for us um you know he, he he's a division one football player you know he's got a he's got an offer and he's got um you know interest from other schools but you know anytime you got a division one football player uh playing for you in the trenches like that that's really big in the past muscleman has been known as kind of a run first football team with baden kind of expanded the offense a little bit eli's obviously got a big arm uh, what though are going to be some changes in the offense? Obviously, you don't want to give too much away, but <laughs> yeah. you know, Baden was kind of a run co- running quarterback as well. I don't think Eli is necessarily yeah. known as that. Yeah, it's tough. High school football is tough, and I say this all the time, just because you know you you can't get out and recruit those kids. Um, you know, even though we got some new rules in the state of West Virginia, you know, you can't you can't recruit them. But they they can come to you, but uh, you know, I you can't get out and say, hey, I want to run a spread offense, so I'm going to go to. Uh, I'm gonna go to DC and find this kid that runs a, you know, a, a, a four, five, four, six, forty, and he's gonna run our offense. Well, he graduated. Well, let me go to, you know, let me go down to Kentucky and fight. You know, you can't recruit those kids. So you really, you know, I, I say this about everybody, and there's so many high school coaches that I watch that I think do a do a great job of, you know, kind of adapting to what you have because you know you look at us, three, four years ago, we had. Tight ends, fullbacks, uh, Kennedy Award winner, bruising. He was really a fullback. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're running a lot of heavy personnel and getting guys in the game. Well, then you graduate those guys and you got to build stuff around Baden and Ray. You know, you got a thousand yard receiver. You know, that, that's going to change what you do. Well, now, you know, that changes up a little bit and you got, you know, it's just a completely different team. So you got to kind of mold your team every year to, hey, this is the personnel that we have. I, I can't get out and recruit a kid to fit this system. So we're going to change the system based around the kids that we have and that's usually that's how I start every offseason you know I, I go in December and January and say okay what like who's our biggest playmakers okay what kind of bodies are these are we gonna you know are we gonna run a, a pro style are we gonna run a spread style so you know I guess um, I made that a really long answer but I, I guess you know with what we have this year you got a strong uh, big quarterback that can stand in the pocket and deliver a little bit uh, more of a pro style strong arm and, and we got a lot of receiver depth so you know we, we'd be dumb to come in and say, hey, we're going to run a power eye offense with, you know, without that personnel. So we are going to spread it out, throw it a little bit more this year, um, you know, kind of playing behind Eli a little bit. You, uh, you know, you in the past, you've been known to build a really good non-conference schedule this year. It moves around, uh, you know, those contracts ended. You start new contracts with schools. Uh, you got Morgantown on the schedule, Cabell Midland on the schedule, and the out-of-conference schedule is Parkersburg at the end of the season. And then you start the season, you got Loudoun Valley coming in here. How big are the kind of those teams on your schedule? Uh, you know, specifically with the two West Virginia ones in Morgantown and Cabell Midland, huge for kind of what they're known for in the state as playoff contenders every year. First off, I want to commend you for, for memorizing all that because I can't even – people ask me, who you guys play this year? I'm like, uh, let's see. I, I can't even remember all that a lot of times. But, yeah, our non-conference schedule is, I mean, I think as tough as it comes in the entire state. You know, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's difficult. Uh, Morgantown's, you know, well, first off, starting the year with Hanley, Allowed, and Valley, that's two really good Virginia teams. Uh, and then, like you mentioned, you know, between Parkersburg uh, – 
Morgantown and um, Cabell Midland, that those are three of the top programs in the entire state of West Virginia, um, and they're all they're all playoff teams. So you know, I believe I believe you challenge us, um, you know, challenge us and get going here a little bit, and, and that'll get us ready for playoff time. Uh, what do you think is the strength of the team this year? Um, probably uh, togetherness. You know, I, I think this team is really tight knit. Um, on and off the field, which which I think will help us on the field, um, you know. But I, but I think probably our strength is just the to get the togetherness that we have. I, I think it's a really tight knit group. And usually when you have groups like that, uh, when difficult times come up during the season, that they, they stick together really well. Anything else? Uh, I had one and I lost it. Give me five seconds. I was going to ask about defense. I guess. Yeah, ask your question. So defense. Uh, that's something that the scheme doesn't necessarily change most years. I feel like you don't have to necessarily change it based on personnel as much. So uh, what are you seeing from the defense in terms of guys that are returning and what we can expect out of that group? A lot of depth. Um, that's my that's my first thing with our defense is, is we have a lot of guys that um, – are, are physical or athletic uh, can run and play. You know, I, I think really modern day defenses have changed a lot uh, to where you know you're trying to get more athletes on the field. You're trying to get more kids that can make plays, and we have a lot of that. Uh, you know, we we were you know the the funny thing, and I'm, I'm gonna get on a little tangent here. The funny thing is, you know, everybody focuses on what we lost last year which is, you know, Baden and Ray, huge pieces. We get a lot back. We, we don't lose a lot from last year. And then our freshman team last year, um, you know, they were 6-1, and 7-1. and one. I mean, they were, they were really, really good. And the one game that, that they lost, we pulled a lot of kids up to the JV level and they were a little bit different on the team. So we had all our pieces intact. We had an undefeated freshman team. So we're really deep at our, at our young levels too. So, um, you know, we don't lose a lot. When you gain a, a, a really good team like that, uh, you, you're going to gain depth. But that's what I'm seeing defensively is we're going to be able to rotate kids, keep fresh bodies in, um, you know, really get after, the, get after teams, I think, a little bit and get to the football. I'm good. Last or last question here. Uh, some people have said you guys are going four and six. Any thoughts mm, on that? Yeah, uh... eh, I don't know. <laughs> 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 Had to ask you, coach, to ask. coaches. You see, usually I don't like coaches speak sometimes. You get like, well, we're here's what I should say. I should say, well, we're just going to show up and be the best version of us every day and get one percent better. That's a, like some of that stuff. That ain't true. It's just saying what we got to say for the camera. So I don't know. I mean. For some reason, muscle. I, I'll, I'll just be honest. For some reason, muscleman gets overlooked every year. And I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know why it is. You know, um, that I'm not going to talk bad about any other school. Like, man, they're going to be really good, or you know, this is the year they finally turn the corner, or whatever. And you know, every year when we get on the field, you know, we we're going to come out, we're going to mind our business, and we're going to, you know, we're going to. Get after people, and we're going to play as hard as we can possibly play. And usually, the results every year. We haven't had a ten and zero season, but since I've been here, we've been nine and one. Uh, we've had several eight win seasons. We've had seven win seasons. We've played several home playoff games. Um, you know, so whatever the perception is of us, hey, they're going to win four games. Ah, oh, they won't make the playoffs. You know, we're 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 going to show up every day, and we're going to continue to try to prove people wrong. And if people want to overlook us or not believe us, then you know, at the end of the season, if we're sitting there with a lot of wins kind of like last year um then you know we'll that's what we want to get to all right coach we'll see you week one that does it for this segment we'll be back with more on the other side of this break this is eric at hagerstown ford over the last decade the way we buy things have evolved now you get on your phone click want it and it shows up at your front door at hagerstown ford it is that convenient we've changed the car buying experience on the i-81 corridor forever and with a return policy better than walmart there's absolutely no reason to buy a newer used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hagerstown Ford will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it, no questions asked. Why waste your time at a car dealership playing the dumb back-and-forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience. Click on the vehicle you want and get your new ride delivered to you. 
at no risk. See dealer for details. Really? Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to call my parents. Dad, come over. The purse gets done. The Traeger Connected Experience. Everything you need for epic flavor. And then some. Shop now and save at Orsini's today. Hello? We're here again three times in the past two days. You're where? At Dull Jewelers. Look. Can Mom hear you? No, she's in a diamond coma. Get her the pendant or I will. Hey, that's my credit card. What? Can't hear you, Dad. You're breaking up. It's going to take more than a crying baby to wake her out of this diamond coma. You're going to need a mega dose of jewelry from Bechtel Jewelers. We welcome you back to EPAC All Access Muscleman Appleman Edition. We're now joined by Muscleman Appleman quarterback Eli Fleming. Eli, you're a newcomer to this team. Uh, what's the transition been like coming into Muscleman this year? Well, oh, it's been great. All the guys have really welcomed me and made me feel at home here. Uh, you know, I don't even think it took a month for like me to get that special bond with them that I think all teams need to have success. So I think that moving forward, based off our scrimmage, we're just going to clean a few things up and we'll be good. Coach Thomas kind of mentioned to us in interviews over the summer that, uh, you know, having you come in, uh, you know, when you did at the beginning of the 2023 year, like in January, and then, you know, be able to help or be in all those flex days and everything. How do you think that that has helped you? I mean, he said it helped you good, but we want to hear your side of it. What what was that kind of like getting to know everybody and then, you know, being able to, you know, not kind of be thrown into things as if you kind of just came here at the start of this school year? Yeah, I think I made it a point to like me and my family made it a point to get here earlier before the season because I think it was uh, important to establish those relationships with my teammates uh, outside of football even in order to for things to be able to like transfer onto the football field. How would you describe your game to somebody that hasn't seen you play? Uh, I'd say pocket passer. I think a lot of people have like labeled me as that pocket passer, but Along with that, I think when I need to, I can use my legs. Uh, and I think like I'll have to share that at times this year. So I'm mobile when I can, but I'd say pocket passer. And, you know, you mentioned kind of being a pocket passer last year and the year before. Baden Hartman, kind of a similar style, but he, he ran it a little bit as well. Um, you know, that's a different style here at Musselman than the previous, you know, five or six years. Uh, obviously, last year was a great season for the team, you know, making the playoffs, getting getting to the second round. Uh, how are you coming in and going to build off that? Uh, I think the coaches are doing a great job, like, designing the offense around the personnel. So I know it's a big transition because I know Baden was more of a scrambler at times when he needed to be, uh, but I think they're doing a great job just designing the offense around more of like a pro-style passer and spread. So uh, I think that'll work out this year based off the guys we have. How do you feel about your receivers? Uh, They lose Ray Adamas from last year's Mm -hmm. team, but still a lot of guys coming back. And and how's, how's the chemistry been with them? Yeah, obviously Ray is a big loss, but like not having, not being able to play with him you know, I just know the impact he had, but we have a ton of other guys out here that can, like, pick up the slack that he left. And, uh, you know, I've been able to gain the chem- chemistry with them that I need to. So I think that we're going to do fine. 11 days away from first game of the season. Uh, and, you know, we were going through the schedule. And obviously you guys kind of need to, you know, one game at a time. But it's going to be a tough gauntlet in the, between the middle of September and into October. Yeah, uh, I think – Looking at our schedule, we got a lot of those difficult non-conference games. And then, obviously, I think the EPAC is going to be a lot stronger this year than in years past. So I think we do have a tough schedule, but I think it's good to have those games because I think once you get some, once you get into the playoffs, uh, you got to be able to have those tough games under your belt in order to get past the ones in the playoffs. What's been the toughest thing about the transition for you? Uh, I'd say just like – probably meshing with the new guys because you know and like learning the offense too because it's hard to get those get that timing with your receivers after playing with different guys for like every previous year so I think but I think everyone has done a good job around me to you know help me fit in and welcome me here what are some goals you have for the season personally and then as a team uh I'd say personally 
just be able to improve in every aspect of my game, rushing even, and uh, for the team, just help everyone get better and win. What do you like most about uh, playing for Coach Thomas? Uh, his personality, definitely. I think he just has that energetic personality that everyone wants as a coach. And he also, along with that, he helps people. He keeps people accountable, which is very important in my in my uh, perspective for anyone that's going to lead a football team. Good. Yeah, anything else? No. All right, thank you, Eli, for your time. And we'll be back with another player on the other side of this break. My kids, you know I want the best for you, don't you? We need to have a conversation. End-of-life planning is no one's favorite discussion, but the relief of having everything in place when the hour of need arrives is a gift. Give it to your family. Plan ahead with us. Brown Funeral Homes, a leading provider of cremations, invites you to explore the many flexible options of cremation. From environmental considerations to the benefit of greatly reduced cost, it may be the perfect answer for your family. Online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. If you or someone you know suffers from the disease of addiction, help is available from the Berkeley County Quick Response Team with peer recovery coaches and support promptly to the homes of those who've recently experienced an overdose. This collective effort towards recovery brings resources and services to the community, including naloxone and treatment options. Call 304-267-1313 or visit the Berkeley County Recovery Resource Center at 800 Emmett Rouse Drive, Martinsburg. The Berkeley County Quick Response Team is funded through a DHHR grant with the Berkeley Morgan County Health Department. Welcome you back to EPAC All Access. We're now joined by tight end slash defensive end Troy Wolston. Troy, uh, another season for you. Last year you ended with that injury, uh, came back for basketball. How are you feeling with the injury so far? Uh, the injury, my knees are feeling great. They're feeling better as ever. I was in the weight room all summer. I went to stretching classes a lot, doing yoga, just to try to make like play a whole 10-game season because my sophomore and junior season both cut short. And, uh, you know, you mentioned being able to, you know, get back out there for basketball. Obviously, you were able to tear it up in that time. You, you came back and played and, you know, got recognized for it. I believe made the all-EPAC team. Uh, you know, obviously going down the football season and you as a basketball player last year, that kind of probably made it tough on you mentally knowing, you know, I might not be able to, to you know, get a lot in the basketball. But you're able to do a lot there. How does that propel you into this season? You mentioned wanting to play a full 10 games. Uh, you know, it was it's definitely a hard mental challenge, like watching my team because we started off, I think, two and seven before I was able to come back. So it was hard trying to keep those boys up. But coming to this season, I really that is I'll have a lot of basketball parents stay healthy, stay healthy. You know, that's definitely one of the big things. But if it pray to God that it doesn't, but if it does happen, I know that the kids that on the basketball team that we have were more than capable of able to lead the team. How do you feel about the new look of this year's team compared to last year's team? Uh, you guys will lose a, a few receivers, Ray Adamas being the big name there, and you'll have to probably have a bigger role offensively in the passing game. Uh, how's that working out for you? Oh, I love this team right now. The energy that we bring to practice every day, you know. And one of the big leaders is uh, Junior, Braden Miller. I mean, he comes to practice ready to go. He's one of the loudest. And a lot of these teams, lot, everyone's doubting us, you know, saying we're going to go 4-6. and six, But, and, you know, we see that stuff, but we're doubted every year no matter what we do. We could have won the state championship last year, and people are going to still doubt us. So coming out here, our mindset's just prove everybody wrong, and it's us versus everybody. New quarterback in Eli Fleming. What have you liked from him so far, and have you been able to become good friends with him? I love Eli right now. I mean, he's he's basically like the pro-style quarterback. He comes out. He knows his job. Passes are good. I mean, our first scrimmage, he went. I think he had like 112 passing yards, 77, uh, 77% completing rating, two touchdowns. So that's what you want to see out of a first-time quarterback here. 
What are you seeing out of the defense so far? Uh, we fly to the ball. I mean, if, you, if you're running the ball, you're going to have all 11 green helmets on you. I mean, we're not just going to be tackled by one person. We're active. We're crazy. We're going to come get you every single play. And, you know, looking at your schedule this year, obviously you as a player are going to, you know, keep it week by week. But there's a gauntlet you're going to run through this year when you, you know, you have to go down to Cabell Midland. You'll have Morgantown on the schedule and then obviously the EPAC teams. Uh, you know, having Cabell Midland on the schedule and, and Morgantown having to play both of the teams away, it was definitely like an oh, oh crap thing when you saw it. But once we came during camp, I was like, we're going to be perfectly fine. I don't care who we play. I don't care what week it is. We're going to come out and do our thing. And that's all we can worry about. Heading into last season, the team was coming off of a disappointing year, a lot of injuries that kind of held you guys back. Uh, and then you ended up making the playoffs, having a good run, you know, getting that first-round win. Um, what are some goals for this year? How do you get Musselman to the next level in terms of – I mean, I, I think they're, they've are they been known as a good program across the state, but how do you get them to maybe a state championship level? Uh, I think it's definitely just – Making the playoffs again, but not just making the playoffs. That's not good enough for us. We want to go to the semis and the actual ch uh, championship. So everyone's goal at the end of the year is always just end your uh, season up at Wheeling Park. And that's just another goal this year for us is just to be able to end our season playing at that stadium and hopefully hosting the trophy. What are some individual goals for you? Uh, definitely is try to break the school sack record, which I think it's 13 or something, but coaches won't tell me. They don't, they'll, tell me they'll tell me when I break it, if I, if I break it or not. <laughs> But that and another goal is just to be able to lead these younger classmen so that next year they're just going to be in just as good as hands they are on this year. Do you plan on playing at the next level? Uh, yeah, I definitely do plan. How's the summer been for you in terms of trying to maybe get your name out there? Uh, summer's been good. I went to a lot of camps. I did really good at the camps, you know, getting my offers from Dartmouth. And then that's my biggest offer right now is Dartmouth. Being able to visit there, that was a beautiful school. But having a lot of coaches texting you is definitely a big thing, seeing that I've only been playing college, I mean, not college, high school football for two years now, really. I'm good. All right, Troy, thank you, and thank you good luck this season. Thank you, man. I'll do it for this segment. We'll be back uh, with more on the other side of this break. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. Hefley Motor Company, just off I-81 at 993 Hedgesville Road, is a family-owned and operated business providing the Eastern Panhandle with the highest quality pre-owned vehicles and customer service since 1997. Hefley is a pre-owned Carfax Advantage dealer. We're proud to be your partner serving the community. You're local, we're local, so why not buy local? Call us at 304-267-7172 or see us at 993 Hedgesville Road. And if you want to sell your car, we buy cars too. Check us out at Hefley.com. Hefley Motor Company, a nice place to do business. It's the excitement of NCAA Division II football on TV10 featuring the Shepherd University Rams. He'll throw it. It's intercepted by Harrison. Dante Harrison is Mr. Touchdown on defense. Join us on Saturday, September 2nd, as the Rams kick off the 2023 season against Southern Connecticut State at Rams Stadium. Kickoff is set for noon with pregame coverage beginning at 11.30 a.m. right here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. You got me during my quietest part of practice, though. This is usually the part of practice I don't say a lot in, because I kind of let my, I kind of let my guys do their thing for about 15 minutes. Yeah, I'll get I'll get hyped here in a little bit when we start going team stuff a little bit. I'm kind of letting my dudes do their thing right now. Um, linebackers down there just kind of working some movement drills. You know, the good thing about us is both our quarterbacks don't play defense, so. Um, you know, and neither neither do our center. So we got you know snap, some center, some snap stuff going right there, which is pretty good because they're getting a little bit of work in. D lines up there, kind of going through some drills. We're popping a little bit right here. I might get hyped during this part a little bit. 
safeties, working open field tackle stuff, stuff they got to work on. Kind of everybody just kind of active at once, man. There's not really a lot of standing around too much during this part, which is good. Good, not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. Good, good. Caden, good job, boy. Good job. Little high, little high. Do you want to interview my offensive coordinator, Coach Cunningham? He's, he's, he, he's about to be a dad, is why I ask. He's about to be a dad. About to be a dad. We can ask him, how's it feel that you're about to be a dad? Oh, my God. <laughs> no comment. No comment. It's hard sometimes because I don't think like like practices change, you know, you, you got to be the same. You got to have the same positive attitude every day, which, you, which, you know, I always try to have. But, you know, some days you got to you got to know when to turn up the heat a little bit. And then you got to know sometimes when to cut it up a little bit. I try to I try to mix the balance between each cutting it up a little bit and letting the kids have fun. But at the same time, flying around and popping some people a little bit. About ready to turn this thing up a little bit. We're about ready to come together and turn it up a little bit. Ah. Play through his hands, my man. Play through his hands. Turn this part up. Come on. Come on. Come on, Pike. Come on, Troy. Turn this part up. How you feeling, dude? I'm feeling good, man. You all right? Some of us, we, we, we got to get used to snapping in these suckers. You know, yeah. you, haven't, you, you haven't got that many practices in, got snapping in those things. So we just got to come out and get those reps like every day when those other guys come out, come out with them and, and, and kind of get the feel for that thing a little bit. Low a little bit. We just got to get them up a little bit. Practice. That's why you practice. Yeah, that's why you practice. Come on, Shank, open this up. There it is. Hey, look at me, okay? Look where my body's at. Look where my body's at compared to my feet. See how I don't have a good posture there? You want to get, yeah, get those feet up. Get those feet up under you where you're getting a little power up under that. Everything else was good. Everything else on that play was good. You know what I'm saying? I told you, I'm going to drive that thing in here and do that with that head, man. Jacob, come here. Frankie, tell, hey, Kane, tell Frankie what kind of haircut we're getting. Me and Kane are going to get matching haircuts. We're going to get the lightning bolts in the side. First day of school. Yeah. I'm calm today. You guys are catching me on a calm day. I'm very not going to get angry today. This hasn't been the best practice. Well, I don't know. You don't want to make excuses, man. It's hot. It's three. They're all those are excuses. They gotta get back on on their stinking sleep schedule, man. You know what I'm saying? I bet I bet most of them today slept till. Oh, you're right. I didn't think about that. They played that stupid game. They talk about that Rainbow Six Siege or something like that. They stay up playing that online with each other all night and then yep. Yep. sleep until. Noon, probably. You can play us online. The four and six predictions will, uh, they'll like the four and six predictions then when they see this online. Anthony, if you're gonna, if you're gonna redirect that guy, give him more than just this. Cause you, you did that, but that's not gonna throw him off his route. Okay, I don't want you to chuck your whole body, but you can give him a little bit of something that gets him off his path. You know what I'm saying? I've been really calm today. You know that? I've been really calm today. This is usually not me, but my whole day, whole day's kind of been like this. Dude, you good? You all right? You tired today? A little bit. A lot of bit. Not just you, everybody is, man. I bet you how you got school. Yeah, but we're going to that next week, man. That's life. Yeah, we had to sit in meetings all day today. Not cool. Not cool. I wouldn't want to do that either. Good, good fight, good fight. Stay up. Colton. Colton. Good job. Good job ripping that through. Nice catch, Sean. Good job, boy. 
Rip. There it is. Yes, sir. Nice ball. Is that cold? No. I don't know if anything's cold today. This is like what it feels like, like the Arizona Cardinals practice must feel like. Miami Dolphins. Nice rip. Nice ball, Eli. Uh, we're going to do like a separate drill where like um, we're going to work two defenses at once. So one offense is going to go that way and the other one's going to go that way. So they're kind of back to back. Um, so it's going to kind of be like rapid fire, like one group go, the other group go, one group go, the other group go. So it's going to be kind of quick, trying to maximize reps. <clears throat> I'm a big component of like not standing around, like kids just not like, <clears throat> you know, I hate watching drills where like one kid's doing a drill and then nine kids are standing in line waiting for somebody to go. So we're trying to get, <clears throat> you know, we're going to have 44 kids active on this out of uh, today at practice minus our kickers. We got. 55, so you know a lot of kids are going to be getting reps here. This is a drill we do sometimes every once in a while, just trying to trying to like I said earlier, maximize the reps a little bit. So like more guys are, you're kind of in the danger zone, but it's all right. Trying to maximize the reps a little bit, so then you don't have to wholesale change. They can kind of, especially in a hot day like this, they can kind of get a little bit of a glorified break while they're running through. Hey, you got, I know it's a little bit of pressure on you, but you got to realize, like, that's something different than what we did. You know, I don't want to talk about last year because it's a lot different than last year, but you're into the most, those motion adjustments. You're the one, yeah, you're in the bumps where you become like a linebacker in the box. So you got to see that and communicate that too. You know what I mean? Okay. Biggest things communicate. You guys communicate with each other. We're going to be all right. If we sit there like telling secrets, you know what I'm saying? Troy's talking. Everybody talk. Communicate with each other. Biggest things, communicating and talking. We're, we're just working on lining the formations, adjusting the formations. They're going to give us, you watch, you watch the scouting report, watch the film a little bit. Yeah. They're giving you guys a lot of motions and a lot of trades. So that's what we're trying to work now to where, you know, we got to stay in that rope and we got to bump a little bit. Make sense? Talk, 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 talk. Just make sure we do that, and he's kind of bumping in that coverage. We are on the same page about what we're in, uh, coverage-wise. Yeah, we're working on on changing up to their to their motions because they're going to motion, give us some different looks. So we just want to line, bump right, talk about talk about like that point where like what what's the coverage going to be? You know what I'm saying? Good question. Good question. Good question. Good, Eli. When you're ready. So you became the will with that motion. Hey, just make sure you guys are talking, you know what I mean? Because they're giving us that different stuff. What would you start off in when you had a single receiver? I stayed, I stayed in blue. Stayed in blue, and then when they came, we came in blue? Okay, that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. As long as you guys are running the same coverage, we're okay. Just talk to each other. Play a team, motion, moving a lot, giving you different looks. You know, sometimes... Biggest part, sometimes just mentally knowing, hey, how do we line up? Where do we got to go? What do you adjust to a formation? That's what we're trying to get done right now a little bit. Tuscarora, line up, Tuscarora lines up in a lot of tight ends and then move the tight ends over, then shift, and then go from three receivers to four receivers to this, to just a lot of different looks.